Hey everybody, Rosalcloud9 here. Um, this may be kind of weird because I already did this, but I'm doing another show and tell of my Tamiya P51D. Um, went back and watched it again, and I couldn't get the quality of the picture the way I wanted it back then. I, I can do that now, so I can do a better quality. I can show off a lot more. And the other thing I didn't like about the old one is, uh, for some reason, I can't reply to comments. Um, so since I don't have the original video files, I thought, why not just redo it again? Um, I'm going to tilt this down just a little bit more. That's better. So, yeah, here it is. This is Tamiya's P51D in 30 second scale. Um, when Tamiya did their zero, it was kind of a slow hit over here. More and more people started seeing it, and, uh, seeing the stuff it could do, but they weren't as excited about the Zero. So a couple of years later, the um, Spitfire came out. People were very excited about that, especially in the UK, uh, Canada, places that had the Spitfire. And then they announced the P-51, and people got really excited about it. And I started wanting the P-51 when I was building the Zero. Um, but I didn't like the color schemes in it that were included. And so I really, really wanted Tuskegee uh, markings on it. Um, love reading and learning about the Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, they're like some of the most important historical figures for me personally. I think they're so cool and amazing, the stuff and struggles that they went through. And I managed to find, of course, um, due to the aftermarket decal world, a set of Tuskegee decals and... Um, proceeded the next year to uh, acquire the kit and then I got the decals and I got started on it so this is not the standard um, Tamiya kit it is aftermarket decals and I'll get into that in part two but part one here I just want to show you guys the features things that the kit does because um, it's really really remarkable if you go back and watch my zero review the Tamiya Zero, you remember I was very impressed with all the features that it had. It was one of the selling points of that kit. Um, they've corrected a lot of stuff. They did correct a lot of stuff with the Spitfire, but I haven't built the Spitfire yet. It's still sitting on the shelf, so um, I, can't, I can't quite review that. Uh, I finished this one in September 2013, and uh, it was a very tough model. For me to build but I was very very determined to build a Tuskegee P51 and uh, to keep building it I really wanted to do something that would be you know honorable of those guys and the sacrifice that they had to endure throughout the war that was really what was keeping me going with this build so let's uh, show off the kit so one of the first things that we get here that's really cool is we get a sliding um, canopy. The window for the canopy is really nice. It's really, really crystal clear. You can see everything in it. It's a little wonky to see inside of there, you know, because it is a bubble top. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's uh, probably about as best as you're ever going to get. The kit comes with three different bubble tops, um, which I will get to later. Uh, inside, the interior is a whole bunch of really cool and nice details and stuff. Let me just try and show this in here. I uh, probably won't get as nice of pictures uh, of it as I can. Um, I do have stills on a blog that I started a while ago, and I do a whole 360 around the plane. Um, there will be a link to that in the description below, so you can go check that out for more still pictures and references and stuff like that in there. Anyways, they um, they did a bang up job. They included a lot of detail into the cockpit, and um, they really, really did a lot to it. But I found out that, or I found personally that it was missing something. It was missing a lot of um, stencils, nameplates, things like that that the P51 has. So what I did is I went and made some decals and uh, put them in there all over the place. Um, I don't know, you can see them here on the battery and the radio. I added some little nameplates on there. 
Uh, the kit comes with two different chairs that you can use, two different seat options. Uh, I used the earlier version, it's more of a squared off one instead of a typical bucket seat. And I only did that because I like the character of that one more. Um, this particular P-51 was piloted by Roscoe Brown. Um, more towards the end of the war, 1944, uh, late 44, 45, around there. So he probably would have had a bucket seat, but I really liked the look of this one more, so I left it in there and I kind of said, you know, really who cares? Um, if anyone doesn't like it, I, I, I don't care, because personally I, I really love it. Um, the other thing that's in here that might upset some modelers is the, the kit does include photo etched metal seat belts. And these photo etched metal seat belts, um, they're good, they work, but they do have a fault to them. They, um, they're very hard to make them look kind of lifelike because they're metal. And um, that might be one thing that you want to search the aftermarket world for. The other thing that you can add into it is a um, pilot, seated pilot, and he looks really great. Personally, I don't like pilots in my aircraft. I don't know why, it's just a preference of mine. But I've seen plenty of other modelers put the pilot in there, and he looks fantastic and uh, really, really great. So it's a nice little addition to have in there. And it also includes photo etched seat belts that you can put around the pilot. So it slides closed like this. There's nothing really holding it down. It can kind of flop around. So you just have to be a little bit careful with that. Um, I'm going to move on to the more mechanical features of the aircraft. The ailerons both move here as well as the tail. We have the wing flaps. They move the landing flaps both pivot down like so they look great um, nice decals in there it's nice to have it kind of posed you know landed like that or if you want you have the option of course of raising the panels up so that's really cool uh, one thing that is that I, I noticed has bothered some modelers is Tamiya did include um, in the panels all the rivets they're very very tiny but they are there the p51 was known for having um, putty filled over the rivets uh, and then they're sanded down to make it more streamlined that's an easy fix to do because the rivets really are very very tiny they're all recessed um, so you're not looking at a tremendous amount of work to you know make that more accurate there's plenty of modelers out there with tutorials and things on how to do that I decided to leave them I kinda like them and so yeah, I left them. Uh, one of the cool things Tamiya has included in the kit is uh, these removable gun panels here on the side. And they lead to show you the 350 calibers and then the gun belts. Uh, one of the problems I had with this though was um, they were just meant to be left on there and held on by gravity and I thought well if I'm moving the model around or showing it off to someone and I flip it upside down I'm gonna lose the panels and that would just be you know the greatest thing ever right to lose a panel so what I did is I cut a piece of metal and made this little square right here and inside underneath the bullets here is a magnet and so these are now magnetized and if you also go onto the blog uh, that I wrote, I did include a how to uh, convert these to magnets so you don't have to worry about that again. So you can just pop them off like that, remove them, put them back down, you don't have to worry. Moving to the underside of the kit, both the uh, coolant valves uh, are flaps open and they, uh, you can see I have it upside down and they still stay. Um, they're a little bit of a trickier assembly. This one I broke when I was assembling the model, so just be a little bit more careful with that. I broke one of the pins, but I managed to super glue it back together again. We have the um, drop tank uh, carriages there, the interior of the wheel well, 
is all nicely molded out into there and I'll get to that in a moment and yeah that's about it so let's move on to the engine cowling the engine cowling is pretty cool it was one of the things that I really liked about the P51 or the Zero I should say and uh, the P51 is no exception to that it's really cool they've taken a lot of the same technology that they used on the Spitfire and they've tossed it onto here so what we do is we remove the propeller the propeller is held in there by a quick little poly cap and then we can remove the engine cowling the engine cowling itself is made out of a different uh, styrene it's much much thinner um, I've seen a lot of modelers handling this stuff like it was fine china you don't have to be it's not that fragile you don't have to be that gentle with it you do have to be gentle with it you should use a bit of caution with it but it's pretty resilient stuff um, so you know don't don't worry too much about it it will it, it can take a bit of abuse um, magnets holding in the side panels here and this needs to be removed you have to pull this out this is a bit of a trickier one I need to do this off there we go so remove that put this back there do that so here's part of the uh, underside of the engine and this part fits just right in there it's the thing I got it in yep and then all you do is put the propeller back on like that and so there you have it the fully visible engine cowling it looks great. Tamiya put a lot of detail into it. It is the same engine that comes with the P or the Spitfire, of course. Um, there's a few little differences to it, of course, that the uh, Americans had versus the British engines, but basically it's the same thing. Um, finding references for this was very difficult for me to do because every single one was different. So I kind of went with whatever one I liked the best. I did add in a bit of wires, and there's plenty of room to add in extra tubing and plumbing in there. Um, but mostly the plumbing and wiring that I did is covered up by the cage there. Um, but if that's kind of one of your goals, is to make a really impressive looking engine that you can display, you're going to have a lot of fun with this because it's a big enough scale that you're going to want to work with and do all that type of thing with it. Um, I should move on to this little piece right here. This is the bottom cowling. It comes with two different uh, exhausts here in the front. One's closed, one has all the grates in it. Um, I like the one that has the grates in it, obviously, but it did have a problem, was I had to drill out all the holes in there, and that took quite a while to do. Um, so I've seen, I've seen people invest in photo etched metal ones, but I drilled them out, and I thought it was okay. It was just a bit, of, a bit more work than I wanted to. Uh, one of the problems I did have with it, though, were these pegs here. These pegs fit um, into two poly caps uh, right here into that little black part there. Um, that's very very tough poly caps that you have to deal with. So when you're when you're building the engine before you get those poly caps in I would strongly recommend that you take it apart take these uh, bolts out and I had to file them down and I, I need to file them down a little bit more. They still don't quite fit perfectly. But maybe file these down, work with the poly caps, get them bigger, whatever it is. Because this is a very tough piece. And it is a piece that I'm worried about breaking. So I do have my concerns about that. That's probably the only fault that I have with these. So I kind of leave it off. But uh, like I said, the engine has a tremendous amount of detail. It it looks incredible. You can almost hear the engine roaring when you when you got it sitting there. And uh, plus, there's plenty of photo references that you can find on the internet, so you probably won't have any problems if you wanted to add all the wiring and stuff to it. 
Um, I looked for aftermarket kits and stuff like that and didn't really find a lot. I could find them, but nothing I was tremendously impressed with. Um, most of the photo art seemed to be for the cowling as far as stuff that I found. So let's talk about the drop tanks. The, the Tuskegee Airmen were known uh, very much for having uh, protecting the bombers, doing a tremendous job at doing that. So they would most likely have drop tanks. Now, I heard that the drop tanks in the kit were removable, and to my disdain, they are not removable. So I made them removable. On the uh, carriages here for the wings, or for the for the fuel tanks, there is a little piece of metal that I wrapped around here. You can, it's not really that noticeable, but it is there. And inside of the fuel tank, I added a magnet. So I clip it in here. And these are all earth magnets, like the ones that come in the kit, except bigger. And there we go. There's my removable wing tanks. So, I managed to get that after all, so that was cool. So the last thing I'm going to move on to, I have to go and get it, it's right behind me. Last thing to talk about is the display stand. Now, a lot of people who know me know I don't like display stands. I don't trust them. Uh, I don't ever really find them to be stable enough, and they just seem like an invitation for my models to uh, fall down and break. But I did end up using it, and it looks pretty cool. In the in the zero when I built it, you basically had to drill a hole in the bottom and expose a nut that was hiding there, and that was the only way to get it in there to clamp it to the zero and the hole would be ever you know forever visible. Uh, Tamiya took care of that this time. They've hidden it and I'm gonna show you guys all about that. So we need a couple of parts here first. So if we need our screwdriver here and the retracted landing gear and this is the uh, adapter for the stand this fits right here so what we're going to want to do first I'm going to put this out here to the side is we remove the tail wheel it comes off like that it's held on by magnets with those little metal plates there and that pops down nicely there and now we're going to remove the part of the lowered landing gear, flip it around, and remove these two sections in the front here. This exposes the wheels, and I'm just going to remove that just to make it a little easier. And you unscrew them. Okay, take that off there, put this big piece back in, like, let me show you that, oh, put this in like so, now we're going to want to screws back in about there and there so now we have really cool looking 
raised landing gear. Put these off to the side like that. Now, behind the coolant right here, the flap right there, is a little square right here. So what we're going to want to do is you want to dig your fingernail under there and remove this little piece here. And right there is the socket for the uh, connecting sand here. So we're just going to take this, this piece here, place it in, okay. There, let me tilt this up. There is our flying P51. That looks really cool. You can mount that down on like a better board, but it does stand up on its own. Um, I think it looks really cool flying like that. I, I really like it, even though, like I said, I don't trust the display stand. It looks awesome. So this is about it. This is about all I'm going to display right now for the show and tell. I think I've shown off about all the features that I can. Um, let me just see, did I forget anything? Nope. Uh, again, if I want to. There we go, there's a drop tank. So there it is. There it is flying to go defend the bombers. Um, so yeah, the next part I'm going to talk more about the decals and colors and options that you get in the kit. But this is basic features that you get. It's a really, really cool kit. Again, if you want to see the modifications that I made to it, there's a link down below on uh, how, uh, how to make that. It's quite simple. And as well, there is a photo gallery of uh, the model. So I'll be able to have more stills and things in there. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's an awesome model. I really, really love it. I think Tamiya did an amazing job at bringing a P51 um, you know, to the modeling table. Is it the best P51 out there? I, I don't think so. I think, it, you know, no model is perfect. Everything will have its imperfections. This one does have a few flaws to it. Nonetheless, it's a terrific kit. And uh, if you're in the mood for an awesome P51 that you're going to have fun with, that you're going to have a blast with, this is probably the one for you. Um, I just love it. I love looking at it. And it was a fun build. And maybe I'll build another one one day. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, get ready for part two coming soon. Rebels of Cloud 9, signing out.